What's going on guys, Joe Briggs here and today we went over to Bricktastic Convention in Manchester Central. Uh, it's Manchester Central is a convention hall and Bricktastic is an event that they host every year over in Manchester. Uh, tickets were £15 each which isn't too bad to say how many exhibits and stuff that they had going on. We had a great time to be honest, uh, first convention that I've ever been to. So I wasn't expecting very much, but I ended up coming away with a load of Lego bits and stuff. Uh, these at the beginning were in the entrance and they were just a bunch of portraits, which we actually spoke to one of the ladies who did this and I was asking her how she got it here. You know, do you just put these things in the car? Do they break apart into pieces all the time? And and, and some of the ones I showed you at first, they, uh, they, did, they built them in sections. So 12 people built, you know, a section each and then brought it with them or posted them in or whatever and then they got assembled there at Bricktastic. This is a view of the entire convention um, which yeah there was a lot of people there to be fair this is peak time on a Saturday this is two two o'clock on a Saturday um, I don't imagine it would get much busier than that these I thought were quite funny but for £110 I yeah no <laughs> The the 8080s were one of the first things we saw as well, and they are absolutely incredible. And I would love to replicate something like this. I just think they're amazing. I can't believe how much work has gone into these. And as with a lot of sets, I'm just now noticing bits that I'm watching this back on my computer at home. And it's absolutely amazing the amount of detail that the people can manage to fit into such a set. Just look at them. They look absolutely incredible. And you'll see later on, somewhere in the video, there is a Fabuland 8080, which is just, that is amazing. I would love to replicate it. This one was amazing, that's film. You'll be able to see when I pan round in a second, just there, that there is like a little uh, movie theatre for the, yeah, there we go. Little Imperial movie theatre. <laughs> amazing. Just just crazy. Like I said, this is the first convention that I've ever been to. And the people, everyone was so chatty. As soon as, you know, you start taking a video or whatever, people start telling you little facts about the stuff that they've made, how long it took them. Um, everyone has a little plaque in front of them, you know, so they can get a little shout out and whatnot on YouTube and give them credit, which is absolutely due because I can't imagine how much time they spend putting these things together. Just look at that one. Let's look at the detail and this is a Jurassic Park one. And I got you just you you can always find different things every time you look at it. We saw some amazing art and spoke to some people who it was their entire job to to teach almost like deceptive art and 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 graphic design. So they had some amazing bits that were designed to trick you. <laughs> you know. Yeah, a lot of trains. Um, people are big on the train sets. Obviously, I'd, I'd like a Lego City train, but I don't have one at the minute. Star Wars sets are always interesting to me, and that's why I think this convention was amazing. Because just look at the detail. And this is I've never seen a LED lightsaber before, and everyone had them. You know, if you don't have LED USB powered lightsabers, then what are you doing? Yeah, monster truck, lots of Lego City, an unbelievable amount of Lego Creator Lego City sets. I just can't imagine how much money was in that room. But yeah, absolutely incredible. Yeah, this one is. Is it Doctor Who? I can't quite remember. There were a few different bits from series that I. Um, haven't seen but you still have an appreciation for the amount of time and work that has gone into that set just like this one this alien versus predator thing it was a bit difficult to figure out how to tackle this convention so I think next year we went over to they had in each corner of the room they had a little stall that was selling you know all these retired sets I think they were just set up by uh, individual collectors, individual resellers 
but there were some interesting sets in there and uh, the prices are more than they originally were as you can see I picked that one up uh, the Simpsons one that is one of my favourite scenes from Simpsons so it was coming home with me but yeah the sets were fairly priced um, I can't really complain if you went on eBay which most people were doing you know in the queue uh, you can see that there, there were a couple of pounds less than the eBay prices so people were trying ultimately but there wasn't much point they were trying to deter people from uh, buying just to resell themselves obviously they were trying to give kids a good deal but also did to grown adults from trying to resell <laughs> which is the name of the game I suppose especially at conventions like these where it's it's all you know it's for kids and adults to to appreciate most of the people who are bringing in sets like these are adults obviously but they had entire sections set up for, just for kids to play and they had some people come in from Lego House to do a little talk about designing Lego sets and um, yeah which we didn't see that this is uh, Fantastic Beasts this is his briefcase which was an official Lego set I'm not sure if that is the official Lego set it looks like or is it a mock maybe some of the beasts are I'm not entirely sure this again that was another Lego set the uh, the Slytherin house I don't think was I don't think that was but the the other one, the Gringotts one, that was definitely like I said. Um, yeah, so much uh, detail in these sets. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, there's a collection of Thomas the Tank Engine that I'm sure someone would love to talk about. I wouldn't know the first thing. But I did like this space one. This space one. It was in its own little booth just so they could, you know, uh, make it dark and, and light it up how they wanted to. Which is just absolutely incredible. How much work has gone into that. Look at that, even the little room was lit up. Crazy. Again, oh, straight back onto Star Wars. And this ATST that's been cut in half by Luke Skywalker. Just looks so cool. Uh, giant Mandalorian there over to the side with Dark Seb. I think this is the. Uh, it's got the Moss Eisley set in, just broken up into smaller sections. These were all miniature ships, miniature um, Star Wars bits. Yeah, they've got the tank there. A lot of cool retired sets and a lot of unique um, sets that I've never seen before in my life. This is like a cyberpunk esque city. Um. Yeah, so much detail. Just watching it back, I'm just looking for <laughs> bits that I've missed when I was there. This I liked. This this um, Star Wars speeder in the style of Formula One car. Might have to try and recreate some of those because I'm obsessed with the Formula One cars and speed champions and whatnot. So that looked quite interesting. And Star Wars. Speed Champions X Star Wars. Yeah, this is a bigger view of the cyberpunk like city. This is just showing off uh, different terrain and stuff I think that they've created. Um, which is quite interesting. That's like the new family tree set that they've got over at Lego. So they might have taken some inspiration there. Might have gone up as a Lego's idea one that Lego, you know, copied off. Which they have never been known to do. This set here is just, you know, someone's clearly said to them, how much colour do you want? And they've just said, yes. Uh, yeah, the minis, the, these, these, no, not, not so much mini Lego, but miniature little sets, miniature scenes from movies. And these were all Marvel movies, Iron Man, Hulk. Yeah, which I like these because I don't think everything should be a giant set that is impossible to attain. These were perfectly capable of showing off what they were trying to show off and on a much smaller, cheaper scale. So I think it was a good takeaway that you can, you know, you can do it. You can bring them to the shows if you want to. I like this um, Vietnam era Lego. 
which I have no doubt is something you cannot buy off your shelf because Lego does not touch anything with violence. Oh, the pirates. Lots of pirates, lots of castles. People love pirates and castles and space. Um, that little house over there almost looks like the Rivendell set. Two Rivendell sets. <laughs> There's a little, little, little one over there as well in the corner. Yeah. Oh, I can see that thing coming up. There we go. The, uh, the 2022 McLaren. Signed by Danny Rick. Yuki Sonoda. And there's other signatures in there, I think. I think there's Zach Brown as well, the team principal. Which I don't know how they got those signatures. I would have been curious to find out. Yeah, this is just like an old Egypt set. Jewish town, Jewish town it said there. Yeah, the mushroom... This is a little mushroom house, which looks really cool, but it didn't have the actual uh, newest CMF, you know, mushroom person. There's a person dressed like a mushroom in the latest CMFs. And they didn't even have them there. There's a little film crew set. Oh, this is from The the Witcher, I think? Yeah. Hangman's Tree, The Witcher. Another Witcher set. Yeah, a lot of it, you could tell that, that some of these, you know, once you started with the theme, they just continued on with the theme, because obviously the people were really, you know, obsessed with the theme enough to make it into Lego. Which, which I think is great. You know, there are a lot of TV shows that I like and, and Lego don't make sets of. I'd love to see some, you know, some obscure Netflix ones like Alice in Borderland and stuff like that made into into Lego sets. I can't really find any uh, mocks and stuff on them, so I'd have to create something myself. But yeah. There are loads of shows that Lego don't touch. Just all these Star Wars ones. Absolutely incredible, just how many battle packs. They must have stacks and stacks of just battle packs, the Rancor. I'd love a Rancor, but they're about £90. Pounds. Um, yeah, this this little Mandalorian versus the Clone Troopers. Yeah, oh, the Naboo Starfighter. Which I'm not sure if that's the original one. Or if it's a, a custom creation. Probably says on the thing if I if I bothered to read. But yeah, this one this one was drawing a lot of attention. There's a guy stood right next to me with his giant camera, taking top down views of this. So we just kinda moved on from that one. <laughs> I was just quite impressed. I was more impressed by the spaceman and the cat. Yeah. Lots of submersibles and that reminds me of that submersible that went underwater last year. Yeah, these were all um, Star Wars sets. Star Wars re uh, Alliance sets and stuff like that. Yeah, there was so much to see. I think we spent about four hours walking around. Um, I like the giant space space guy. Oh, this this cargo ship here opens yeah that was cool opens from both sides motorized and it and it just opened automatically every minute or so which I can't imagine that in the room next to you while you're trying to sleep but but at the convention it was really cool this giant star forge it's the amount of time that went into that a load of miniatures here a little mini ATST mini Naboo starfighters yeah. Some really cool sets. Slave one. Y Wing. Yeah, there's unfortunately Scooby and the gang have gone on strike as we have run out of Scooby snacks. I'm not quite sure why that sign was there, but the sign was funny. Because you could see them in there. Yeah. Walking into the Adidas shoe shop now. Giant mini kit. Uh. Oh yeah, <laughs> the jowl with a little bear. Yeah. yeah, this was a cool one. A mix of um, is that the is that the Hocus Pocus house? Um, a mix of Scooby Doo and Ghostbusters and oh, is the Fabuland eighty eighty. Now that 
is something, and it's all made out of actual Fabuland, and just, ugh. How has he managed that? It's amazing. Now this is the Imperial Fabuland base. <laughs> oh, just beggar's belief. This one, the Aston Martin. Old village shit. Uh, not much, not much for me going on in that one. But I can, I can appreciate it. it's taken someone a long time to, you know, get that collection of VW minibuses. Again, you do most of this stuff because you'd love it, not just for other people. You'd hope to find someone who has another appreciation of this, but but like this one, I found really cool next to the photo of the guy assembling the original AT80. Classic Batmobile, space. Oh, that's Star Wars, actually. <laughs> yeah, oh, this one was really cool. The lady was talking about this one. It was, um, yeah, it's a map of the UK with like the most interesting bits, like Gatwick Airport and. Or is it Stansted? Just, you know, airport and certain bridges and... It was really cool. Really cool design. Yeah. Knights again. A list of stuff to spot, which is, which is, which is, I think most people should do that, you know, when they're hiding stuff. Everyone will have favourite bits that they, um, that they've hidden. <laughs> And when I feel like when you put those lists out of um, stuff to search for, it really encourages people to stay and stop and chat and have a look at everything that you've got. Now oh, this is us. We had a quick go on the raffle. Obviously, they had these two sets here. It wasn't much. I wasn't very interested in the Disney Princess one, but the other one looked good. Um, yeah, so you either came away with a minifigure or a set. I think most people that day came away with a minifigure. I like the race tracks. The, the people have designed and all the all the audience are always full with really really funny characters this is a Monty Python set which absolutely amazing I've never seen anything like that one the amount of detail that someone pointed out and the guy was dressed as uh, a Monty Python character and he had the the horse clackers there you can see you can see part of him he had the horse clacking thing you know like the guy goes like <coughs> with the clackers <laughs> God, I love Monty Python. Yes, that was a really cool set. A bit interesting use of the uh, giant mini head figure. Yeah, lots of lots of little Marvel sets. Pirate guy. Well, he's not actually a pirate. Is he? He's, uh, I suppose he's like the anti-pirate. Yeah, giant map. <laughs> oh, the aquarium. The aquarium was really cool and detailed. So detailed. Yeah, the Zen gardens and uh, these people were obsessed with um, trucks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, the giant Scarnier and all made out of Technic pieces and it was really cool. Oh, this one was amazing. And it had all the Fantastic Beast characters in and stuff. It's a, it's a slice of the Titanic. It's a 143rd um, actual cross section of the Titanic that, with, you know, original Donald Duck. Um, but yeah, I'd like all the Fantastic Beasts. There's a Niffler in there somewhere. And Newt Scaramander. Stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, art. Which I'm not that big on my art, but I can appreciate it. I can appreciate how much time it's going into it. There's a Darth Vader light there behind uh, Bowser. But I think that's the Bowser from the car set, which actually looks pretty cool. I just saw that for the first time the other day. And I think I might get that one, because most people say that's the better of the Mario sets. Uh, there's stuff on here, like the Bill Bullet. Um, the Aragog from... Harry Potter, monkeys, monkeys with the lightsaber. I don't know what set that's from. But yeah, giant Groot invading the city, minions. You can see Hagrid down there with the giant turkey. 
Just absolutely, yeah. Probably got a few emits from different sets. Captain Jack Sparrow. There's a little shot of me in there with uh, the shopping bag. <laughs> yeah, this one was crazy. How much work's going into that? To build a full arcade uh, theme park. Working, working theme park out of Lego. You just know that the minifigures are never getting off. Yeah, this is the full Infinity War Part 2 fight scene. Probably with all of the, you know, original minifigures. I'm struggling to think of any that were missing from there. Uh, this guy was, was demonstrating his Muppets and his Muppets set that he'd created. And, and he was talking to somebody else about his love for the Muppets and how it all started back in the 70s. And yeah. It's amazing the reason that people, some people, you know, have for building the sets and and, and how much their affinity for the certain shows and stuff go. It's just that the, the affinity for the TV shows that they're watching and stuff meets with their love of Lego and one day you just end up at a brick fair. But we had an amazing time, me and the missus, at Bricktastic and I would absolutely definitely go back next year. I think for it cost £30 for the two of us and we don't live that far from Manchester so it was a quick less than an hour drive over. Um, but definitely worth it. Definitely, even if just, you know, you want to go to shops. The little stalls that they have in there and look at some of the vintage sets. Just gives you a bit of idea of you might see something that you didn't know existed, which was was quite a few other sets for me. Uh, yeah, here we are at one of the stalls again. Picked all these up. Uh, Breaking Bad. Oh, this was another stall that was selling minifigures for twelve, yeah, twelve pound each, which is a little bit steep for my liking. I know you can source these. Uh, you know some of the rare ones from eBay and other. China and whatnot. So, I, they're not, you know, official. So, <laughs> there's not much point in paying £12 a piece for them. I can see that, you know, if you saw one there that you really wanted to finish your set, you might do it, but yeah, the £12 was a little bit rich for me. Yeah, this they had the LED powered. USB lightsabers there, five pound a piece. Mini Grogu's. <laughs> Christmas Grogu, you didn't even see Christmas Grogu. The first time round. See, I'm spotting stuff all the time while I'm rewatching this. That place was selling minifigures for a, a little bit, a little bit dear. You know, I think Dobby was there for, a little, little minifig Dobby was there for 15 pounds and I know you can get the giant Dobby for 20. So you could have a giant one or a mini one. For about the same price. Yeah, more, more art. I think that made most of this next section was was quite a lot of art. This is a War of the Worlds style set. Interesting how they views the fire though. I quite like the fire. Uh, yeah, this was a giant. Not quite sure what the building is. Like a little cafeteria in. Yeah. Uh, yeah this is a little half destroyed house. A burnt house. A virgin cinema. That's such a, um, a strange thing to pay homage to. Mario Kart. Oh, this was an amazing one. Really liked this one. I like any that kind of show you how to make um, different stuff that Lego haven't shown you how to make. <laughs> you know, the, the creativity behind it. A giant Lord of the Rings set. Again, is it missing Rivendell? Hmm. 
I don't know. Oh, Natural History Museum. Yeah, a lot of absolutely mammoth Lego City sets that just make you wonder how on earth that... Just how did they get them there? Oh, this is quite interesting. This is made entirely out of the Lego lever pieces. You got Ashoka, Tana. Uh, yeah, there's there's a little thing of the, all the levers. Did they use how many levers? Yeah. Great, especially considering they're all Star Wars, so it's quite interesting to me. Uh, Lego lightsabers. This is the full women's England team. I think it's the England team. I mean, obviously, because of all flags that they've got down there, but I mean, I think it's the Women's England team and not just a, a random championship team. Uh, yeah. Some cool cities, some cool streets. I like, I like this one. Not modular, very, very in line, very neat. That's a giant Darth Vader's castle. Again, someone spent a bit on battle packs at some point. <laughs> this one was really cool. With the slave one in the um most easily like star part thing. And it had the who shot first. That's a cool cool light tower. Well yeah, quite a few Pokemon ones, which obviously um I don't really think Lego have made. Eevee. Yeah, old school Colosseum kind of Greek. Yeah, some proper cool. I like I like the variation, even if even if I don't like you know every theme. I like the variation. I like to never know what you're gonna see, and this guy is a good example of you never know what you're gonna see. Because this thing went round the full table. I'm just recording this. This is the first bit that I saw, and I thought this was quite impressive. How it, you know, this guy next to me put the ball in, and it got fed up to these little basketball players who then tried to throw it in the hoop. And yeah, I thought, I thought that was everything. But <laughs> the more I kept walking, I realised that hang on a minute, this encompasses the full table. It literally went all the way around. You'll see in a minute. I'll do a, I'll do a fish eye kind of zoomed out look. Because I just kept walking and I thought, when does this end? You know, I'm trying to get the full thing on video. <laughs> and then I just realised that it is the full table. But absolutely amazing, especially considering that the guy had to get in and out of the table during the day. So he'd built like a special archway into this entire build just so he could leave. <laughs> you know, so he had to go to the toilet or whatever. He could still walk under. You can see the archway just there on the right, but this is his full table. So those balls were going all the way around this table. Just mental. But yeah, that's the that's the archway that he'd built there so he could walk out. Yeah, so they come up on this little conveyor belt and come down the tube and carry on the journey. Yeah, this was just another giant Lego City set. I mean, it, you, you kind of, you know, once you've seen one giant Lego City set, you feel like you've seen most of them. But each one had a lot of, you know, unique loving. I do love these giant heads. The Grievous one was really cool. Cad Bane's really cool. These, you may have seen one of these on my thumbnail. If that's the one I end up going with. <laughs> yeah, they're just so cool. I mean, I saw the the multicolored Millennium Falcon on Reddit before when someone says, you know, I think that's the small one. But on Reddit, someone had the UCS one completely from random Lego bin bits, and it looked absolutely amazing. Yeah, the Queen parachuting in to the London Olympics, which I don't remember. Not the Olympics, the Queen parachuting in. Yeah, there's Boris. <laughs> Boris coming down with his two flags. <laughs> <sighs> Boris. 
crown jewels. Uh, 99. Ice cream with flake, basically. That's for a 1990s. Um, anyway, Spaceman. Mini Spaceman. Just some really cool space sets. Really quite interested in the space sets. Uh, this is the... Um, this is the one from Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. Yeah, I oh, yeah, spoke to this guy for a while. He um, he showed us how he put all this castle together, which was really interesting. Considering he'd used a load of 1x4 tiles to build the entire base, and it said it took him forever. An absolute eternity to put that base together. And I asked him if it's been glued, you know, how did you get it here? Did you glue it? And he said, no. <laughs> no, we just took it, just bit by bit, and half of it falls down every time we take it somewhere. There's Spider-Man coming in to the Jurassic Park, as you do. But yeah, you can see some people have definitely had some fun building these. I think you've got to. I think if you're going to invest that many hours, the hundreds of hours to put something like that together, I think you've got to be having fun somewhere. Another Lego City. I like this guy. Yeah, I think that's just about coming to an end. So yeah, so it was a very good day out at Bricktastic. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I think definitely be going back next year. Yeah, these people had some really cool, cool um, motorized mechanical sets that like a pinball machine and, and um, a little like remote controlled labyrinth so you were turning it side to side and the balls were rolling and yeah a coin slot machine red giant red bull can just notice that <laughs> yeah some absolutely amazing sets and again we spent absolutely hours here I think I must have I recorded everything but but must have been must have shown you know a quarter of the time that we were there because we were there for a very long time. But loved absolutely every minute of it. I absolutely loved this, the whole Boon to Eve pod race. Oh, this one's amazing. I'm assuming normally it goes. But at that minute, it wasn't going. And there were some really interesting characters in the audience. <laughs> I don't remember from the original Star Wars. I remember these guys. Also, if you're curious, this is everything that I managed to pick up. Harry Potter set, two Star Wars sets, a couple of little Dimensions bits, and a bunch of Simpsons characters that I really wanted, and Dr. Beaker. But if you liked this video, then please subscribe, and also if you'd like to watch me go to all the cheap flea markets in Denmark, then the video is on screen now. Thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.